Welcome to episode 144 of the Guardian One podcast, recorded August 10th, 2017, right here on twitch.tv forward slash Guardian One Network. My name is Remy, and tonight I'm joined by Jez. Good morning. Agrios. Greetings, Guardians. Sharks. Let's talk promos. And Gray. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> We're going to be talking about all things Destiny, but first, housekeeping. Hello, Guardians. Thank you for listening to the podcast, however it is that you are choosing to listen. Be sure to follow Guardian One on Twitter, at G1Net. That's G, the number one, N-E-T. In addition, be sure to check out the Guardian One website at GuardianOne.net. If you want to send us an email, you can send it to feedback at GuardianOne.net. We also have a Bungie.net forums group. We utilize the forums for both comments and feedback, so be sure to join the conversations going on there. Big thank you to all those currently in the Twitch chat. As Remy said at the top of the podcast, you can watch the show live at twitch.tv slash Guardian One Network. We broadcast every Thursday at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific. If you can't catch the live show, you can always find the podcast on iTunes, as well as upload it to the Guardian One YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Guardian One Network. Guardian One is a proud member of the Guardian Radio Network, so be sure to check out the Guardian Radio Network website at theguardiansofdestiny.com. There you'll find all of the different podcasts as part of the network, including the flagship podcast Guardian Radio. They broadcast every Monday night, 8.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 p.m. Pacific on twitch.tv slash Guardian Radio. You can also follow their Twitter account, at Guardians of D, and their YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Guardians of D. Other podcasts that are part of the Guardian Radio Network include Ghost and Echoes, a podcast that contains a bit of fan fiction and audio versions of the Grimoire cards, as well as the Destiny lore-focused podcast called Focus Fire Chat. Once again, thanks for joining us on the podcast. I'll see you again next week. All righty. Thank you very much, Hollow River. Um, it's getting more and more exciting. It's getting more and more real that Destiny 2 is coming. And I, I feel this way because it feels unreal. Like, I feel like the more I find out about it, um, and this is like a whole new game. Like, I realize that, that much of it is going to feel the same as I want it to. I, I want much of Destiny 2 to feel like Destiny 1 because much of Destiny 1 wasn't broken. There wasn't any... There wasn't any reason to change necessarily the the way you look with the look stick or the way you move with the left stick. Like a lot of it was was really fantastic. And the more I feel like Bungie has done a really good job keeping a lot a lid on a lot of it. <clears throat> and they made mention of it in the Bungie weekly update. Uh, and we also learned a lot about promotions that are coming out. Lots of cool stuff to talk about R- right now. What I want to talk about is grenades and horseshoes, something that I've wanted to talk about ever since the first episode, and I've been upset that I haven't remembered to bring it up. And so I made a note, and uh, I want to talk to you about it, Gray. How are you feeling with this new show? I I love the show. Uh, I love the premise. I love what you're doing with it. Um, How are you doing with that show? Uh, It's... It's a blast. It's a ton of fun. Um, it's it's getting better each week. Uh, it was initially a ton of work. Uh, I'm sure that Mark, Yuna, and I, each of us underestimated just the amount of, of work that goes into producing uh, a show like that each, each week. Um, and, you know, we're refining our process, so it's uh, kind of a little bit less taxing on each of us. Uh, and the product's getting better as uh, you know. We basically have more energy to uh, to perform on the show and talk about the things and be the kind of people we want to be without kind of feeling the weight of all the production that happens behind the scenes. And a big part of that is pulling in a lot of uh, content producers to help us with the segments and make really just high quality content that we can showcase. And so uh, Mark's been leveraging a lot of his relationships in the Destiny community artists, the DCA. Um, We've networked with some different friends that are contributing uh, content. Even this past week, Nicole and uh, Dynamite, she produced a segment for us. Uh, And that's making it, you know, uh, definitely higher quality. And then this week we made some big changes in that we did the show completely live on the air as opposed to recording it one night, editing it down another night, uh, and then playing uh, a more... uh, you know tailored or produced version and it worked really well in fact i think it was a far superior product 
Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's been really good so far. We're, we're only five episodes in, so it's still pretty early. Uh, but the people who have watched it, we've had really positive feedback. It seems like they're really enjoying it. And we're starting to build a community around uh, the type of just kind of zany, wacky type of stuff that, that we're making. So we're not trying to really appeal to the hardcore serious nature destiny fan you know this is supposed to be pretty lighthearted, and we certainly keep it that way and those people we don't really feel like they have a good place right now to seek destiny content um so it's kind of a niche area that we're starting to develop this community that they want to see silly things about destiny out there and we can create it and it's a lot of fun to do so you know i uh i wish to propose to you that you actually are catering to the hardcore at this point like the same thought the idea right agrios the idea that that people are you know still playing destiny at this point what people are looking for is new and different they still want to live in this world they still want to call themselves guardians and call other people guardians like they they want to exist in this world and i feel like what you are giving them is a a a different angle on the same stuff you know it's it's a really it's a difficult position to be in, uh, and I feel like a lot of the community is is looking for something like this. Uh, and I'm excited to see how the curve of followers goes because you're right; the people who watch it are very interested in it. It's a very it's a, a different take, uh, and it's ex- and it's exciting take. I do want to say right now that I hate your guts for uh, putting yourself green screen in front of a, a cockpit. It's an idea that I had a long time ago, and and I'm still planning on stealing it. I mean, it's going to be something that happens a lot in the community. Like, it's it's only a matter of time before everybody puts themselves in front of a cockpit. Uh, but I want to say I hate your guts for, for yeah. doing that first. <laughs> well, and I mean, that's a big, uh, I guess... One of the big positives of, of our show is we can leverage Mark Square as an artist to to help design the sets that we put ourselves in. Um, you know, the set that we have for this show is something that, that I designed as a very mediocre type artist. Put that guy on developing sets within the world of Destiny, and he's come up, and we've worked together collaboratively to make these things look really good for a stream, um, but we've made some really cool things. The cockpit one, you know, we've had to try different things. The first week we had uh, kind of hyperspace stars moving in the background and we got a bunch of feedback saying it just was, it was too busy, uh, almost uh, a little bit motion sicknessy. So we changed that to where we're just kind of sitting in orbit, which was a very positive change. Uh, we liked it better. The community responded positively to that. This last week was one of my favorite sets. We're in the busted up, blown up ramen shop, flames in the background, sparks flying everywhere. The, uh, the ramen, uh, the uh, spicy ramen shots, neon light is all busted and it's only blinking halfway right. Um, and those kind of things are a ton of fun to create, and it's a lot of fun to get to share that that art really with the rest of the community. So you'll be seeing those scenes, that cockpit scene. That'll be one we use we use a fair bit. And you know, if it helps uh, encourage other shows to also kind of increase. Um, that amount of, of detail in what they're producing, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm all seeing the Destiny community step up the level in their production of their streams. I mean, it's already great content, um, but I think that, that things like that do add a level of, of polish to it that probably isn't in there with a lot of shows today. Well, I mean, the majority of what you see as far as Destiny content is concerned is gameplay. Uh, and, you know, it, it's it's hard to blame those people. I mean, it's it's really very cheap and very easy, uh, not unlike a podcast like this podcast. Once we were done with the initial investment of time uh, into like the graphics and the setup, it was easy to keep reusing these things week after week. Uh, and so for you to, you know, Re- bring back certain segments you know here is a set that we can reuse we can just throw this in there once that initial investment of time is spent uh then you can you can do that but i, I feel like what you're trying to do is keep fresh and to keep moving you know, like you don't you don't want to be put into this rut and this week you did something really crazy which was just play the nightfall now i do want to say that i i appreciated the modifier you put on yourself uh and it was really nice to see the camera changing between the three different point of views with the icon of each of you in the upper right hand corner so it was easy to tell who was playing um right. how did that work out as far as you're concerned like is that something that you're planning on bringing back 
Yeah, and we had a lot of, so this was the first time we did a live gameplay portion. Um, a little bit unique in that all three of us are on the stream at the same time, uh, but rotating the gameplay behind us to, to various players, whether it's Mark, you and or I. And again, we had really positive feedback from, from the viewers that that was something they'd like to see come back. So we'll probably do uh, different types of segments. So Battle Runner, all of our segments are based on weapon perks. Um, so that being a Battle Runner segment where it's a direct competition amongst the hosts, uh, you know, we'll bring that back, but probably not necessarily an every every week type thing. It'll probably be, yeah, we'll come up with other segments that involve our live gameplay or other people's live gameplay um, that have different twists to them that also align with weapon perks. But that is something that you're probably going to see pretty consistently from a production standpoint. Um, yeah, this show and what we're trying to pull off from a live perspective going from from static sets or semi-dynamic sets to live gameplay uh, is is a little bit of a technological feat. Uh, something that, you know, I will have an idea and figure out how to leverage the technology to pull it off has been a lot of fun. Uh, it's created some nerves, but like last week, right, we prefaced the show by saying this could be, uh, this could be interesting because we're trying something that we haven't really tried before and it went perfectly. Uh, so that just kind of encourages me too to see, okay, what can we step up next time to to see what else we can do with with our different services, OBS, uh, you know, pulling down these different streams, different types of sets that we know that Mark and I can create. Um, we can we can do some really interesting things that maybe uh, nobody else really. That's our goal. We want to do something that nobody else has done or nobody else is doing in producing live Destiny content. Well, I think that you're definitely succeeding. Uh, in that aspect, uh, and I wanted to give you um, an idea for your next Battle Runner segment. I think it would be really cool if the losers both had to plant their face in like a whipped cream pie. Like, like, like. I feel like if there was, if there was a way for the people viewing, like they know that there's going to be repercussions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, they get to experience it live on on air. That'd be pretty good. I, I like that. You wouldn't even know. You wouldn't you guys wouldn't know which one was going to do it and who wants to put their face into a whipped cream pie like like it's I true. don't think anyone wants to do this. And you'd have so, to have it sitting there in front of you taunting you the whole time you're going through the the battle runner <laughs> segment, right? You're going, right. "Shoot, if I don't get some more kills, that thing's going to be on my face." I like right. that. Right. And then and then that promotes the the cutthroat nature of competition you know like like i'm do i want to revive <laughs> unilala <laughs> yeah that was that was a mistake wasn't it <laughs> <laughs> it was and you know what i want to say right now that both me and lawn boy way called unilala winning uh but it, seriously uh mark's a great player you mm -hmm. are are an overachiever uh and unilala she cutthroat She's just going to go for it. She's not going to lose. Uh, yeah. I would be surprised if, if she was the one with the pie face uh, or whatever <laughs> you guys end up doing. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, an unnecessary ice bucket challenge. That would be pretty funny, too. <laughs> right. right. Um, so, uh, Agrios, um, what do you think about this uh, grenades and horseshoes? You, you agreed with me when I said that, that they were really catering to the hardcore um, what are your thoughts on this? And uh, do you have a favorite segment? Do you have questions? Do you have comments? Uh, let's let Gray hear it. Well, there, there's a difference between serious people who don't like fun and hardcore people. Like, I, you know, hardcore people like fun as much as anybody else. And I, I think it's, you know, a lot of the hardcore people there are going to appreciate a lot of the, the humor, the setups, like the backdrops, things like that. Um, like, if you're not hardcore, you're not even going to get the flashing ramen sign up above that's broken. And the, you know what I mean? Like, it's the hardcore people that are going to really appreciate those little details that you guys put in and whatnot. So, Absolutely. <clears throat> I, I definitely think it still caters to that. But, yeah, I, I think it's, it's, it's nice. I think it's, it's, uh, it's different than anything that we had in the community so far. And I look forward to seeing uh, what, what comes into the future. Right. I am, too. I uh, it's at a really horrible time for me. Like that period of time is like uh, the wife is coming home and kids need to eat dinner and dog needs to be walked. It's a horrible time frame for me. Uh, and yeah, I so, really wanted to tune in live, but I barely got there at the very end of everything going on is basically ending as I arrived. So uh, excellent. Uh, Sharks, uh, questions, comments, concerns uh, for Gray about this phenomenal new show, Grenades and Horseshoes. 
Well, gray, gray knows I don't have any concerns about the show. Um, my only concern is that they just are going to keep doing the crazy stuff because that's what makes the show awesome. It's not just another talk show. Um, it's it's not that boring info that that some shows give. You know, it's it's just different, and that's what is so appealing to to fans watching it. And you know, people are people are gonna finally run into it, and they're gonna see it, and they're gonna go, oh, you know, this isn't this isn't just another talk show, and they're gonna find out they love it too. So I I think their their audience is just gonna grow and grow as it as it keeps going. So yeah, you know, guys, keep up. Keep up the great work of doing the crazy shit. You know, I mean, you know me, I like crazy shit. So good job, <laughs> Ray. Good job, you know, Lala, and good job, Mark Square. Says the talking shark. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jez, question, comment, concerns, ideas, um, also um, compliments, uh, cut downs. What do you got? Uh, probably not as much as you're expecting. Uh, mostly. It's nice to see someone try a variety show in online communities because it's definitely more interesting than, you know, a whole bunch of people talking for food for two hours. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) um, Yeah, just, I don't know, keep a... Keep a list of your running gags because they're going to start to catch up to you. Man, that is a great that is a great bit of advice. I really like that, Jez. Uh, and that was the nugget that, that I was looking for from you. That's a that's a great one. Uh, great. The idea that you would keep up running jokes like this is your way of rewarding the people who tune in every week uh, and for, you know, month after month, year after year. Those are the people that are going to be really pleased by these things. And I feel like because it's not just topical, uh, there is a reason to go back and visit previous episodes. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I don't know. Great job. It would also, when you do get partnered, because you will, uh, give you ideas for your emotes. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think you know, you know, is going to be a good one. You should definitely keep that one in mind. <laughs> yeah, that would be, a, you know what would be an excellent one. Do one for each of you. That way you can see what the chat is thinking at the time when they spam you with whichever one they're going to spam you with. Um, right. So do you, do you have, uh, now that you're, you're on your fifth episode, um, do you have a more succinct way of, of um, describing your show, like after after all of these episodes that you've done, do you have a, a quicker way of getting to the heart of what you're doing? Yeah, if I was going to put my you know my one liner out there, it would just be the show is all about fun. Uh, a variety of segments. It could be anything each week. Just always destiny related and always always fun. Um, the uh, the ones that are, are most common that people are gravitating towards, and part of this is because we have uh, just so many connections with the Destiny art community. People really like our quick draw segments, where we take, uh, you know, the two hour process of uh, we've done one with Lays so far uh, that you know he's he's doing one of his amazing pieces over the course of a couple hours, and we cut it down to a four minute uh, uh, time lapse. And, uh, and, and those look really neat and we just kind of commentary over it. And so those are some more of the reoccurring type segments. This battle runner is going to come back. If somebody's like, uh, creating some sort of a craft, uh, we call that hammer forged. So we do that as a time lapse as well, which is pretty neat. Um, we'll do montages this week. We did one that was hidden hand, which was a bunch of, uh, uh, destiny, um, physics glitches. Right, so things in the game that you know the engine breaks down or uh, somebody gets caught in the geometry of the map, and and Destiny all of a sudden starts doing weird wonky things. So, and we're always coming up with new ideas, and we're getting ideas from our content producers too. They come to us and say, "Hey, you know, it would be an interesting idea for a segment, you know, X Y Z," and we tell them, "Okay, let's run with it. Let's support them in which ways we can, and we see what they can come up with." When I was mentioning before about tryhards, that might not be the best way to put it. Um, you know, not all of our feedback has been positive about the show. And one of the things that we just we learned through the experience was putting our product out there 
uh, in certain environments, it doesn't appeal to certain audiences. So if you're the type of person that you're going to a certain website, a certain uh, uh, Twitch stream or something like that, that you you just want, you know, to know core elements of the game. You're not necessarily going there for the primary reason of being entertained. You're going there because you want sound information. Um, as much as we are hardcore players and we have thousands of hours into this game and we love it, we're here first to have fun and not necessarily to be absolutely correct. Um, and so it didn't always perform very well in terms of we just got some some negative criticisms that it wasn't the kind of content that people who were going to that type of a site to get that information, you know, we're being pretty silly, pretty lighthearted. And in a lot of ways, we're still refining our product. Um, so as we get better with our product, as it gets more refined, um, and we find the audience that it's going to be most appealed to, we're certainly going to direct it towards uh, towards those environments. Um, and part of that was it wasn't doing us any favors either, because you can only read so many rough YouTube comments before you're like, you know, I, I got better things to do in, in my life than hear people Crying complain about, about things. So uh, we're definitely, I think, hitting our stride. It feels that way, which just makes me wonder when we get to episode 15 or episode 20, how we're going to feel then, because I'm sure it's going to be feeling even, even more refined and, and perfect because we're still kind of tweaking everything each week. Yeah, I uh, I don't know how to respond to people who who come to that channel for basically the you know either guides or how tos or gameplay. You know, one person's comment was like, "Oh wow, you know how far Planet Destiny has fallen" or something like this. Uh, and I wanted to engage. I wanted to engage this person and be like, "Hey, if you don't like it, then leave. Like, if this is not what you're interested in, what are you still fucking doing here?" Uh, well, but that's a really bad way of putting it. But the way Gray fa- phrased it is actually a fairly valid criticism, as far as like, it's not even a criticism of the show. It's a criticism of of the choice to have it there. And I think, as far as labeling, like transparency goes, helps would help you know a lot with that. But, I mean, when you put something out there on something <clears throat> with a huge following, like Planet Destiny or something like that, there's just going to be a huge amount of toxicity at first. Like, frankly, regardless, it's a good thing because you're getting exposure. There are people watching your show. If there's trolls out there, each one of those trolls represents 20 good guardians who are watching your show. <laughs> so... <laughs> Hey, you know what? You say in that. Okay, so I I watch a lot of YouTube, whether it be um, bloggers, vloggers, shows like this, whatever. And it's actually really funny. One of the biggest YouTubers right now, Logan Paul, actually made a comment about this one day. He goes, "Oh, you know the the trolls. They're they're so epic right now. They're just like that's all they get is trolls, 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 trolls." And he goes, all I hear is cha-ching, cha-ching, because every single troll that's yeah. sitting there looking and commenting is making me money. Yeah. So think trolls about it that way. You know, you guys aren't making money yet, but bring the trolls on. Come on, trolls. Here, here. I just want to comment right now, Sharks. I think it's really great that you're still wearing that that shark hat. And if you and if you uh, are able to and decide to wear that sharks the whole time, I will be really thoroughly impressed. <laughs> I don't have any prizes or anything, but you will have impressed me if you wear that the whole time. Um, okay, great. Well, um, excellent job, uh, excellent job, Gray. Excellent job, Yuna. Excellent job, Mark. Um, I feel like, you know, like Jez says, you are going to get partnered. It's really only a matter of time before mm-hmm. before the collective notices you. Uh, and I feel like as long as you are being unapologetically yourself, as long as what you are doing you feel is awesome, then that's what's going to get you to the next step. You know, uh, three people showing up to your show, five people showing up to your show. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <It's> just joking. <clears throat> um, yeah, you're doing a great job, and I can't wait to see where it goes next. Do you have a way? Because I noticed that you were taking, um, I noticed that you were taking like user generated content. Um, do you have a way of telling people like the week before what you'll be looking for, or is it just like a free for all? You know, send us your weird clips, um, you know, uh, and do you, uh, do you, yeah, that's my question. 
Yeah, so we're still, you know, refining that process, certainly. And one of the things that we, we don't want to get in the habit of is if we have somebody who's willing to donate their time and their talent and their content to our product, um, you know, we don't want to put a bunch of, of boundaries or regulations around them. We do tell everybody that, look, if you want to contribute to something in the show, it it's up to us to kind of decide if it's something we're going to use or not use on any given week. So uh, everybody has to kind of recognize that there's not, you know, no hard feelings. If, if it's not something that gets, you know, you give it to us today, it might not be in episode six, it might be in episode 16. Um, and we don't, we don't put deadlines on people either. So what we end up doing is we have uh, this, this pattern of content that's incoming. Um, we kind of, as we look at what's coming through uh, throughout the week, what's coming in, we decide which segments we want to feature. We're still working out, you know, how many segments do we want to feature? Uh, initially, we wanted to do more segments for each episode, and then we kind of realized if we're going to go with more of this live format and to keep our time at a reasonable time amount, we really probably don't need three, four segments per episode. We probably only need one or two segments per episode. So, you know, we're kind of uh, usually by about Sunday, Saturday or Sunday of the week before, we're dialing down which segments we're actually going to use so that we can get in there and start building the scenes, loading the um, the elements into the actual stream um, so that when Wednesday comes around, everything's, all the bugs are worked out whatnot. And when we go live, it's relatively good to go. Um, now we're early into this process. We're only five episodes in. So the amount of content coming in, we're just now really getting to the point where we're getting a lot of things submitted back into us. For the first few episodes, a lot of it we had to generate on our own. Um, as people kind of uh, gravitated towards the show and they thought this was something they wanted to be a part of, then we were able to get um, you know more people on board that are submitting content. We've got some really cool things. So if, if you watch the first four episodes, you know recognizing that a lot of this was created by Mark, Yuna, and I, um, the stuff that's going to be coming out here in, in the future episodes where we actually have a number of community members working on this, um, it's some really cool stuff, better than what we could produce under the restrictions that we had of trying to pump these out, uh, you know, three segments in a week. That's quite a bit of content you have to create in a short period of time. Uh, and now we have these people that are helping us with it and they can take as much time as they need. They can spend three weeks working on a, on a segment. We have some of those that are coming down the line that are going to be really, really cool. Excellent. <clears throat> excellent. Excellent. Uh, well, all the best to you and your show. Um, let us Thanks, talk Randy. about, <laughs> let us talk about the destiny to information in front of us right now. Agrios, what do we got? All right. <laughs> well, this week in the update, they talked about the, the changes they're making going forward with what they've learned from the, the beta and what we can expect in the PC beta and, and furthermore, you know, in, in the game moving forward. The uh, PC ga beta will start uh, with early access on August 28th, as we know. And uh, they had uh, Crucible design lead Lars Bakken in to uh, talk about... Uh, some changes to the Crucible or how, how they're going to handle the Crucible going forward. They'd already mentioned previously that they were going to tune the quick play and competitive list differently, but now we have our, our first details on how exactly they're going to tune those differently. Uh, for quick play, matchmaking times will be shorter with less emphasis on skill. This is the fastest route to a game, but you may face opponents outside your comfort zone. The winning score in control has been extended from 75 to 100 to allow for more time to play and use your abilities. Because too many matches were shorter than we expected, some Guardians were, weren't were even able to charge their super. We've extended the trigger for the Mercy rule so that it will come into play less often. This is a mistake. Uh, I read this earlier, and it made me upset. Like, if you are losing by enough to where their mercy rule would kick in right now, and now you have to wait even longer for the other team to just keep beating you over and over, so much so that they get their super, and then they stamp on you some more, I feel like this is a mistake. I feel like if the mercy rule is going to kick in at all, uh, it needs to kick in probably right where it is. If not, You know, earlier. I didn't have it kick in in Destiny 2 for me, so I don't know where that line is. <laughs> is exactly but I that either means agrios is really like good happened when i still could have came back 
That means Agrips is either really good or, I mean, he's either not really good or not really bad because he's always, if you never had the mercy. I had it kick in a few times on both sides where we did well and then we didn't do so well. I never once felt like it kicked in inappropriately. I never once had it kick in and go, oh man, mercy rule already? It's well, too you know close what? of a match to mercy this right now. We could come back. Never felt that way. That was a lie. I did have it kick in once, but it was against one guardian and it was like really, really unbalanced. So I had no idea where the threshold was. Like it was like ridiculously clear cut. So it did actually happen to me during the beta once to be clear, but it was no experience really. Uh, what about you sharks? Did you experience the mercy rule and did you feel like it was too long or too short or just right? You know, I actually totally agree with you, Remy. I think it's really dumb that they are extending the mercy rule. Um, I I saw it. I saw it lots of times in the beta, and um, I actually, to be quite honest, I actually th thought that the mercy rule needed to be shortened because, um, I mean we would have to, I mean, we were stomping people and it wasn't getting mercy ruled. So, I mean, it, I don't know what the, it, I have to say, I, I don't know what the exact threshold is, um, but I, I think it's wrong upping it. I do like that they're upping the the um, the kills. I think that's a good move. I think uh, yes. 75 was, was way too small of a number for... Absolutely. Uh, for as quick as these matches were, it's kind of weird though because I, I was watching um, I was watching Ali A um, play um, um, Black Ops Three, and they had a they had a type of um, uh, yeah Black Ops Three is bad yeah it actually is uh, I agree Jez uh, but it no that was me saying you're tapping oh no I'm not touching anything um, and. Uh, they they um <laughs> it it must be my shark teeth hitting hitting while i'm talking um but, <laughs> it's great but, uh, it's great yeah. he, he he types like the hulk <laughs> i got no, my I, mic muted. I, I um <laughs> i i saw i saw this match where they were doing uh 75 points and i thought oh that's kind of weird maybe it's a, maybe it was an activision thing but i i love that i love that bungie has gone and changed it to 100 points um so no, I don't know. So so far the changes, except for the mercy rule, seem to be interesting. Thanks, Chief. Uh, let's put it that way. Uh, what do you think, Jez? Um, well, I don't think it changes much, actually. Like you think that the uh, changes is going to make the mercy rule not happen as often, but I think it's just at the same ratio because they increase the kill count. They probably increase the mercy ratio equally. Well, I think that it, the actual text says that it won't happen as often. I think that they actually said used those words. Yeah, now, but it's if still you're... it's still a function of uh, it's probably still the same ratio, um, but it just means that there's more. The other team has to overcome a bigger hill to mercy you. I know, and that sucks for the people who are just hanging on. I don't know. <clears throat> I, I'm hoping that this is a situation where the numbers are in clear, uh, clear violation. Like, like when they look at all, when they look at all the game numbers, they think, well, if we just add on another 25 points to the total to the end, and then if we bump this up just a little bit for for the mercies to be uh, for them to come into play later. Uh, I'm hoping that that's what's happening here. My personal anecdotal experience does not support the changes uh it doesn't make sense my just my experiences were not the same as what overall is going to help that's what i'm hoping uh i kind of feel like that's the way a lot of these things work is that my experiences are not they're not what they're trying to change <clears throat> so all right moving on moving on so uh in contrast the competitive playlist uh, matchmaking, uh, they say, matchmaking takes more time to introduce you to players that are closer to your skill with good connection. These matchmaking settings may take longer, but we feel that the quality of the gameplay experience will be well worth the wait. 
We have also made improvements to the way we calculate your skill in Countdown to better reflect how you'll perform against your opponents. So uh, there's definitely a, a, a distinct contrast. Uh, how do you guys feel about the difference between the two playlists with them uh, letting the, the skill requirements be a lot looser for the quick play type play versus the competitive play? Now, th this would be, for me, like in contrast for them having all game modes available as a ranked playlist or a not ranked playlist. How, how, how do you guys feel about that, Remy? I feel like it's, <clears throat> I feel like I'm confused as to what they're trying to do. You know, like a, in previous Bungie games, they had a social playlist and they had a ranked playlist. Uh, in the social playlist, there was no, <clears throat> you weren't trying to gain any kind of ranks. I feel like it was, I feel like it was a funner and freer version of the ranked playlist. The ranked playlist, whenever I would go into it, which was not very often, it was a struggle. It was a struggle uphill to to try and beat these people, all of these people who wanted to have, uh, you know, this little star by their name. Um, and I feel like I feel like I just don't really understand what they're trying to do here. Like I'm not misunderstanding the words that they're that they're printing. I just don't see the vision. Um, <clears throat> what are you What are you thinking about this, Agrios? Well, I, I feel like as matchmaking is now. Like, I feel like I have fun, even matches, fairly often. Um, I don't feel like, you know, I struggle, and I also don't feel like I, I steamroll people. Um, I don't feel like I'm an awesome player. I feel like I'm just slightly above average. And I feel like when you loosen the skill requirements, you make the play type less fun for at least 50 percent of the audience because i don't know about you but why would i want to go into casual if i'm going to have a sweatier match there than i would in ranked because i'm worse than 50 percent of the people out there say well see that's that's exactly the discrepancy that i'm looking at right here it's not casual versus ranked it's quick play versus competitive and so and so while you and i are on the same page as far as why would you go into this if it's going to be sweatier than this that's just it that's just it is they're they're redefining these two categories as far as that's concerned because when i read this i thought well i'm never going to go into quick play why would i why would i open up the skill gap so far that i'm trying to fight sharks out there or you know any number of these people who are really excellent players in the community i would much rather take a little bit more time to find a better match that's closer to my skill with a better connection. Uh, but you're I also like... going to die and well, not be able to revive and have rounds and not be able to play control or whatever. I'm I'm like, actually I'm actually kind of feeling that none of this is out of the plan. I think this is what Bungie planned all along. I think people were a little disappointed when they noticed that there wasn't a difference in the beta. But this is what I think the, the issue is going to be. I think that it's going to take a long time, noticeably long, to to load into the competitive playlist. Hence the term quick play. You're going to be able to get into a match very quickly. What if it is, on average, a three minute wait time in the competitive play? Now, first of all, for the beta, people are going to freak out. They're going to go, three minutes, I got to wait for this. But if they move in this direction, right, and I don't think they're going to do it out of the gate. I think they're going to slowly can keep dialing those needles. They're going to have this one be super quick to load into a match. You don't want to wait the three minutes to, to match make against uh, players that are going to be of a, uh, a competitive skill level, but still making sure that there's a decent pool of players to keep the connections good enough. Um, I think that's what they're doing here. That's why they use that terminology. And the way they fix the problem is by saying, look, you chose to go into the competitive playlist. You know you're going to wait to get into a good quality match. You know, I, I almost feel like they should have... They should have flipped it and and ma and changed the names. Like, like the idea that... They even say right there on the uh, right there in the um, in the words they say that you're gonna you're gonna face like a, a much more uh, <clears throat> let, let's see where is that um, there it is um, this is the fastest route to a game but you may face opponents outside of your comfort zone I feel like instead of quick play they should have called this like the wilds or something like like there is no 
there is no uh you know it's just crazy here like like i feel like that would have been a much more i don't know maybe i'm wrong there uh let's get some more people commenting on this uh sharks what do you think about this quick play competitive Are you excited about these things did you immediately register that these were going to be uh good or bad or other what i registered was and and i didn't get it at least i haven't seen it yet was every single top tier sweaty person complaining that uh that they're going to be in sweaty matches all the time when they do competitive play blah 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 okay <laughs> because because i think i think putting skill based matchmaking in the competitive playlist is amazing i actually okay now don't get me wrong okay i love pub stomping on people <laughs> while i was while i was doing competitive play on in the beta but that's that's like that's boo boo that's you know i don't i don't want to get i don't want to get these bitches and just yeah go you know you got no life you're playing this game too much blah 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 that's why you're winning you know i'd rather just play against somebody that's badass and i know i'm going into that kind of match and i'm going to be sweaty anyways i mean gray nose i get sweaty i get sweaty i think you're all misunderstanding sharks <laughs> I literally think sweaty skill-based matchmaking and that they're loosening it for quick play not rather than tightening it i don't well they're i don't even think it's a matter of loosening it right i think the end goal for them in both of these scenarios is a, a quality experience from a connection standpoint and right so they want to make sure there's not the ghost bullet issue there's not bouncing around guardians on your screen now if you want to do that and load into a match quickly you take skill base off the table so now it's just who's around me that i can get a connection as fast as possible we're not going to worry about the skill level and you're going to have a more varied experience because your neighbor yep. might be the most badass player or your, your neighbor might be crappy at it you, you don't know but you're going to match with them because it'll be quick to get into that that lobby and you'll be able to have a good experience in the game from a network standpoint. Now let's yep. say that you want to actually have a competitive match against people with your skill level. Again, their end goal is to reduce the number of ghost bullets, reduce the jumping around, have a good network. You got to wait. You got to wait for somebody around you to want to load into that match. So it's got a decent enough connection, pings are low. And you might, I think the, the big difference, the reason why quick play is the right term for that playlist is because whatever the other one in is, is going to be the opposite of quick. It's going to be two minutes, three minutes waiting for a match. that's the perspective of someone who's good. The people who aren't good, they don't have to wait for matches already. No, okay. So no, 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 they're going to have to wait too. First of 50% of the people out yeah. there, you're just going to more often than not have a sweatier than necessary match under quick play. But wait, no, what Gray's saying is right. There's one thing I want to add to it, though, is that, okay, so throughout Destiny 1, people, uh, you know, again, we're going to talk about top-tier people, right? These, the the people, and, and it's not all top-tier people. I shouldn't say that, but, um, but this is where you hear it the most from. Um, top-tier people are, are upset because it's, it's sweaty to go into a skill-based match-made system and I want to have that quick play, go and have fun, all right? So that also appeases to them. So anybody can go and play the skill-based match-made stuff, okay? But if you want to just go in there and just have some fun with your friends, jump on, um, you go in there, it's going to be quick, like what Gray's saying, jump in there really easy, and it's also technically not uh not going to be a sweaty match necessarily because you could be playing against somebody less quality than you but at the same time you could be playing somebody the same or better than you so you know you still have that sweaty feeling but it's going to be that oh okay it's just let's go in and play some crucible but if you and your whole team on average for, are definitely worse than 50 percent of the people out there more often than not, you're going to be against people better than you. Well, and I mean, some of this is going to be based on not just people out there, but people in your regional geographic area. You know, who's who's likely going to give you a good connection? Because that's going to be highest priority, not their skill level. So 
it's it's just it's exactly what they said. It's going to be varied. Now, if you're a top tier player, the likelihood that the people around you are going to be better than you is low. You're probably going to go into that playlist, and the varied experience is obviously going to lean more towards less skilled players because everybody out there in the pool is probably less skilled than you. If I'm mediocre, if I'm average, I'm probably going to sometimes have people better, sometimes people worse. You're right, Agros, in the sense that your individual skill level, level, based on the pool of people out there, is going to affect what your experience is. But I think that Bungie only has so many levers to pull if really what their end goal here is a good network connection in the game. Right, they can I absolutely agree with you. But I think if you had all game modes as ranked or and all game modes as quick play, then you can pick your play style and not be restricted. If you want to play control, ah, well, good wait. luck. You're against nope. people better than you if you suck. Nope, you can't say that. You know why you can't say that? Because for the past, I'll say year, but it's way more than a year, you've been saying, eh, there's too many playlists. That's what the problem is, this and that. If there were less playlists, the quality would be better. Okay, I'm not I'm not quoting, quoting you, but that's pretty much what you said. All right, so now you're saying take all the game modes that we have. For the people at the top, I've never had any problem with the quality of the playlist right now. Yeah, but, but the people but at the top that saying, are waiting 15, 20 minutes for matches, it's because the pool's reduced at this point. Yeah, well, do we know saying, do if they now. have said there's only going to be certain game types in each playlist? Yeah, because quick play is control yeah. and those game types. Competitive is countdown and those game types. Okay. Yeah, that, well, that's okay. Fine. Yeah, that's and fine. I would say I, I'm not a big fan of that either. I think that I should be able to pick the experience I want, whether it's right. more network based connections or skill based, but have the same pool of games to select from or at least rotate them right i could understand them not saying we want to put every game mode in both lists because you're going to run into the issue sharks is talking about right the player base gets too diluted especially late in the game the life cycle of the game but rotate them have three or four in each playlist and have them be different but control happens to be in quick play this week and then now it's in competitive the next week that's not a bad idea, Gray. I, I could totally live with that. My beef is now that if you're a terrible p p Destiny player but want to play PvP, it, you're restricted to the competitive playlist or you're going to get stomped every time you go into quick play. So you just oh, don't get to play on. control because you're in come the 20% bottom. Well, somebody is in the bottom 25%. Like There's people okay. out there who are in that. There's somebody making up that yeah, group. But you're, okay, oh, you're talking about if you went in with four people... Four people total. They were all on the bottom tier. That's not how it works. Come well, on. Well, no, no, no. no, no Even I'm just... saying just me going into quick play solo. If I'm in the bottom 20% of players, I'm going to be against people better than me 80% of the time. Yeah, your team well, might win, but you might not have a good right, experience exactly. as being at the bottom of your team. And unfortunately, that's, I mean, that's kind of what, that's the way the cookie crumbles yeah. you know you know what you know what the answer to that is gray doesn't want to say it but i will the answer is get good get good, get good. Yeah. The answer is just have yeah, both all good. game modes on both types okay no so the answer is to play competitive while right. the competitive people play quick play right oh, yeah. <laughs> okay so it's important to mention that they said less emphasis on skill it's not going to be an 80%. They're not going to they're not going to put you necessarily with, you know, 50% or above, but you are right, Agrios. Somebody has to be in that in that bottom 20%. Somebody has to be the person who's a, you know, repeatedly getting a 0 .005 KD on every one of their matches. So, <clears throat> while I I definitely am in agreement that it's I, I feel like it's um, maybe not the right move or that I would not have pushed that move. I, I probably would have argued against it. It, it makes sense in that, you know, taking the, taking the skill time down and also opening up a little bit more is not, I don't think it's the end of the world. Definitely. I feel like this change coupled with going from six V six to four V four is a little bit, it's a little bit like, you know, my car doesn't work. I'm going to change, you know, I'm going to change the radiator and the alternator. And let's just see what, you know, I don't know. It's, it, I feel like they're changing, they're <clears throat> making too many 
movements to really have a good idea of, of what they're doing. Uh, then again, there's a ton of people at that studio and they're not fools. So I'm curious to see how it plays out. But I, I do agree that there should be the same selections for each of these. Um, putting putting in uh, originally when the skill based matchmaking was a little bit more when it was more even or even totally even I don't I don't know exactly what their numbers were uh, it made sense to have this specific competitive has a more competitive game type this quick play uh, <clears throat> selection has you know these other less competitive game types that made a lot of sense um, so <clears throat> here's so- the hoping. It, it, you mentioned it. Region's going to have a lot of bearing on it. Well, I live right next to Tampa. There's a huge slew of really good Destiny players in Tampa, like pro level players and stuff. And the way I look at it is, I like when I looked at it, I'm like, oh, well, if they're going to do it that way, I can't see me ever going to anything other than competitive. And I'm like, oh, they're going to have bounties that are going to make me go do things in quick play, because when I go to look at it with the time I'm spending not in PVE but in Crucible. When I go to look at the two lists to play, do I want to risk going up against someone like Luminosity, or do I want to go against people my same skill level? No, right. better higher is better. Well, no, okay, better. but okay, I, I absolutely agree. I just get there's, evaporated by those people. Absolutely, but that's the thing. That's totally the thing right learn. there. It, there's a difference between people who quick scope as a rule and people who do it by accident. Uh, and I feel like that's that's the difference is is Agrios is talking about. Let's say that he's in the you know, let's say that he's in the upper 70s. Uh, his cap is going to go right to that top um, and that he will be facing these people who are exponentially better, not just not just lucky better, not just, um, you know, played to get to where they are better, but like younger and better reflexes and, you know, like do this all day, every day. Like, I, I see what you're saying, Agrios. <clears throat> I see so, pro-level Destiny people in my tower all the time. So, like, <laughs> what am I supposed to just go into quick play and if I see them on my opposite roster, just leave the match, just ditch out? Like, that's No, sucks. but <laughs> one thing that I, I also... If, if Bungie's smart about this, and, you know, I, I feel pretty strongly that they've got their two levers to pull from skill base versus, uh, you know, the amount of time it takes to load in to get a good network connection. When the game launches... The player base, hopefully, is going to be exceedingly large, and those settings don't need to be as drastically different. Um, so you can get into quick play, you can get a good connection, a good match, and the skill base, it, people can be somewhat closer to your skill level. And in the competitive, a similar thing. Your time to load into that ideal match with a tighter skill base isn't going to take as long because there's more people in the game. I think where we're really going to see this play out in ways that we're going to talk about it a lot more on the show is once that player base dwindles down and if they're you know if their setup is dynamic if it is truly responsive to the size of the player base that's where we're going to start to see bigger discrepancies between these two playlists that's a really great point gray uh and i think that we should leave that there so that we can discuss other things but you're totally right i think one of my biggest regrets in destiny one was not just jumping right into pvp when i had the chance i mean there was there really was just a lot to do raising six characters across two systems it was really there was really just so much for me to do uh in pve and to be honest i was a little scared to go into pvp just because uh i feel like i feel like i feel it more i feel like i feel the the pvp more um and you know watching like my nine-year-old watching my nine-year-old go into pvp as if these other players these other real humans are just ai and watching him not get tilted uh because he just keeps getting killed like it's it's something that I study <clears throat> because I want to be like that. The calmer you are, I feel like the more you are able to make better decisions, you know, as far as whether to engage or disengage and, you know, what site points. Uh, the only <clears throat> exception to this rule is good night, Unawala. The only exception to this rule is Sharks, who, even as he gets increasingly tilted, refuses to stop. Until he's happy with the outcome, uh, and I or just like me who never gets tilted but still isn't great. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> the, 
two exceptions to the rules. You know, the 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 super tilted and and still gets what they want, and then the totally not tilted and. <laughs> Agrios, I'm, I'm just wondering because you know everybody gets a little tilted. Do you use any? How do we say it? Um, external um, substances to help keep that level head, no, so you never actually, get tilted. That has no bearing on anything. <sighs> No, the thing I want to say, he's a liar. He does get <laughs> tilted. Okay, I have heard him tilted, and I have heard uh, him. Swear that's what he's lying about. Lot. Oh no, but I do. But that's just me being boisterous. I'm not actually angry. I'm not actually feeling any negative emotion. That's just me being all oh, that motherfucking got me wild. That's bullshit. <laughs> but that's just me just being excited about the moment. I'm not actually no, angry or negative feeling. I'm. I leave that match. I'm like, yeah, let's do another. Can you really say that uh, there's no bearing on it when it's always bearing on you? Oh. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm saying there's not a time that you don't have, you don't really have a, uh, what is it called? You don't have a control subject. I can't describe what I'm talking about. Well, it's all right. It's part of then. a Tavlo song. <laughs> all right. Moving on. Agrios, what do you got for us? So uh, they also brought in sandbox designer Josh Hamrick to talk about other changes coming that will affect uh, PVE as well. Uh, they've confirmed that they managed to fix the infinite super glitch, uh, the Warlock Glide glitch, infinite grenades glitch. They have reduced the Warlock's range to be the same range as all other classes. So now all classes have an equal melee range when perks aren't altering that. Uh, Good. They uh, globally Good. reduce Let's, the time uh, it takes to get your super. So that would um, affect PvE as well. So in, as well as increased matches, you'll get your super quicker. Because that was definitely a times? complaint we had. Did hmm? it give percentages or times? For this no. increase? Uh, because, man, seven and a half minutes or eight minutes or whatever it was when I did that math, that was way too long. Way, way too long. Uh, <clears throat> so I just wanted to take a real quick uh, real quick poll. Jez, uh, I've, read in the, I've read in the community on Twitter today, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, let's not have anybody be special uh, with regards to the, um, the melee reach. Is this a non-topic? Is this important? Is this not important? Uh, equalizing everyone's melee when no other factors are involved. I mean, I don't think it's going to affect too much. It's just people bitching because there's a reason to bitch. Now, to be clear, they reduced it by... I mean, if the numbers hold true from Destiny 1 to Destiny 2, they reduced it by one-seventh of its total range. Yeah, that's, it's, it's possible that... Uh, this was a change they've already made, and it wasn't spurred on by any other outside forces, except it wasn't done in the beta. I That's mean, this true. is a huge debate throughout De Destiny 1 was the Mor Warlock's range, so it's not like this is a, a new topic of contention that's just, like, news to them. Yeah, well, I mean, as far as Destiny 1 goes, uh, the range is bullshit, because one... One class can barely hit, and the other class has fucking, uh, it was like Mayweather versus Ali. Uh, Sharks, what do you think about this? Is okay, it a so, no-brainer so, or a no chew or what? No, here's what I think, okay? I'm real, I was really confused. I, I thought the whole point was to make all the Guardians equal, and obviously they weren't during the beta. Everybody knew that. Everybody was kind of complaining about it during the beta and i thought it was stupid it you know let's let's go and make everybody kind of the same oh not really warlocks are still gonna well, no, have i like the variety of having things now, different. i don't like variety I, I i think that's <laughs> i like okay let's have variety as in oh yeah i'm a titan oh i gotta hit you like this oh i'm a you warlock like I gotta you you like gotta hit yeah but but it. come on you know have the same damn distance you're still guardians still humans you're all the same size. I've only got that reach. Yeah, I don't I'm have cool. I that, that reach. 
okay, that's all I have to say. So I'm glad they've changed it. Okay, uh, um, Gray, what do you think? Uh, same same range on melees as long as there's not an additional modifier. Is this what the community is making it out to be, or is it just a mountain out of a molehill? Yeah, so I mean, I went into the Destiny 2 beta thinking that this is one way they were trying to level the playing field. I have complained in Destiny 1 about the Warlock melee range. Uh, they've gotten the reputation of being an easy button because of their, their melee range. Um, which might not be fair. I'm, I'm not saying that I agree that it's an easy button, but it certainly uh, is an advantage in close quarters. I mean, I, I will agree with that. Um, but going into it saying that they were going to be equal, and honestly, my experience wasn't that it, that I noticed there was a difference. I, I couldn't say that I walked away from the beta feeling like there was an advantage on the melee range. There, I might have noticed a little bit, but it wasn't overly obvious. The fact that they are saying, oh, we are truly going to level these out, I think it's the right move um, on the melee ability. I, you know, It should have been that way for the beta. Somebody forgot to put a zero where it was supposed to be. They're just rectifying it. Um, I don't have a big problem with it. Make them the same. See, for I, me, I, Destiny 1, my Titan's my easy button. Like When I'm like, oh, I need to get this done, nah, I'm just going to flip my Titan and get done there. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, the dual lightning grenades and stuff like that, I just Destiny One, Destiny Two. I feel like Titans the easy button. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I'm glad that the base melee is the same. Uh, I feel like with you know throwing knives, that is a special action that is not replicable just over and over and over. You know, you don't have unlimited knives. There's a charge time associated there. Actually, so when it... you can have unlimited knives. You put on the perk for the headshots and you only hit headshots. I've seen guys just go through and just headshot, 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 headshot. Is that returning headshot. in D2? What? Is that returning in D2? Because I know that it was a thing in D1. I don't know if it works out perfectly in D2, but it's like the perks are there. Yeah, okay. but the, the... The difference is the... you don't have one-shot kills right. with it. Right. right. So you still well, got to shoot. You, might, you, you could still get it, though. What you'd have to do is you would have to damage. In fact, this is what I do in D1 or with team shot. like grenades, is you have to damage the person first with the, with the gun, and then you throw your, your, uh, your knife. Because then, you then it would keep going. But no, or wait. Team I team would work well, too. Yeah. No, you're right. But no, I, I do want to say something. Okay, so with these changes... I, I don't know how much more we're going to go into it, so I want to say it now. I'm, I am kind of worried because, um, you, you know, they're talking about upping all this damage, which is fine. I mean, we needed it, right? Like, everybody was, ah, you know, this is horrible. We can't kill anybody. It's got to be team shot. So we're going to, this is what Bungie says, we're going to up the damage. You guys are going to be able to go in there and kick ass, right? Okay, so we still only got four players on the on the um, on the field at the same time. You still, if you're really smart, you're gonna have people team shotting you. Well, now you don't even need to team shot. I'm gonna kick people's ass right away. Okay, so that that part there kind of worries me. I really, I was really enjoying the the up of the the time to kill because that's something that back when Destiny first landed. Um, I was talking to a lot of people that were big in Halo and they were like, oh, you know, and in fact, one of my friends um, who doesn't like Destiny and part of the reason doesn't like Destiny is said, oh, you know, it's the time to kill is not like it was in Halo. OK, so that 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 part there worries me. But the other part that worries me is that they're they're upping everything. Right. And they showed this trailer. And one of the things that looked like they upped was not just melees, but shoulder charge. Okay, so a couple things. The, uh, th there's a lot of discrepancy. There, there's a really good breakdown on Reddit. And there's a lot of discrepancy between the numbers that are shown on screen. It's almost as though light level matters in the trailer. It could also be, hey, we want a dynamic looking trailer. Let's up all the damage just so this guy looks like a badass killing everyone. Well, the problem yeah. is that they literally, from one shot, like one screenshot to the next, show the same submachine gun doing yeah. different damages to different guardians of different light levels. 
Well, the problem is there was also a 305 body shot with a sniper rifle. <clears throat> so, uh, right. It does. It, it's possible that it wasn't like. Uh, uh, pro- it possible it was multiple sources of uh, video. Right. And one of those sources of video was, oh, extreme. Let's make this look awesome. We just want to make sure we get kill shots, so let's up the damage yeah. so that it's easy to make kill shots for the video. <laughs> imagine right? imagine watching a trailer where this guy kills four people and it takes 20 seconds in one shot. <laughs> it just, brr, 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 brr. <laughs> it just takes forever. Totally. And you know what? <clears throat> Somebody made mention, no. Say No to Rage made mention that it's, you know, basically, you know, false advertising. People are going to see this this trailer and they're going to say, oh, this looks super exciting and, and super fast paced. Like, I feel like they brought it into sort of like that lawbreakers feel, you know, like here is a fast paced game. And that is not at all what I want. I, I don't want a super fast paced game. I want a strategic game. And so for people who played the beta and for people who are a fan of the change to two primaries, you know, like that, that, that trailer was all power weapons and all abilities like, <clears throat> and but it's it a trailer. Was... It's supposed to be flashy and show stuff off. I mean, they didn't show kills. Like, I mean, I, I don't think like, you know what I mean? Like it, it's something they show between like, you know the 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 beginning and end scene on a television show okay, like get wait, attention. wait if Agreed. you okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna plug i'm gonna plug somebody from another podcast briar rabbit he did an awesome video that he released today so if you if you want a really neat breakdown of the damage that was done um and comparing it to the beta um go and check out his channel um he was showing you know he he took everything and super super slow mode it down right there was only one guardian shooting okay there weren't bullets coming in from any other angle and um um shots i like i think at one point i you can't really quote me because i'm not 100 percent positive now you know i only watched it once but they were there uh, at one point he was shooting with uh hand cannons it was two shot kills um they they shot with a power weapon which was a sniper, it was a body shot, one shot kill. Okay, that didn't happen in the beta. I was using I was using snipers. And the other thing was um, melee hits um, killing people with with shield still. okay? That wasn't happening in the beta either. So they they have upped it a lot, not just a little bit, a lot. You're muted, you're muted. You're muted. Oops. But we are all equal light levels by by no choice of our own. What if in the competitive playlist light level matters? Or what if in quick play light level matters? Maybe that's the reason that the sniper does that much body damage to a guardian because that's the light level difference between the two of them. It's possible, but I kind of I kind of doubt that they would show I mean, I don't know. I I'm, I'm not saying that they that's not the case. The but... problem with that theory, though, is uh, the way that light level mattered in Destiny 1 was not... Ne- there's no way it was that drastic. It was yeah, but not, everybody like, complained about that. Not... Well, people were <laughs> also true. not... Uh, people were also mad when it was too high. And I don't I know think, anybody was mad when it was too high. I think uh, having it be basically twice the damage on a shot is kind of ridiculous even if light level mattered yep i agree you know, with you i feel like i feel like what they showed was like that that five to ten second moment after you've already played three or four minutes into a game where you've built up your super and you've gotten power ammo and you're making the play that's what they were showing was the big plays of the game uh and it, it it really does make a lot of sense, you know, when you think about it. When uh, sure. like when they're advertising football, you know, they don't they don't show you like every oh oh he got a he got a whole yard, you know, like you know oh it's a fumble or you know 
replay third down like <laughs> they don't show you those to make it sound exciting they show you the big the big plays the big game making plays so it it makes sense uh, it makes sense i just feel like i don't know i feel like i'm just ready to play the damn game so i can so, give some real feedback on it i think there's there's two things here and i agree with say no to rage right like either these are the changes and we're going to go in and play a very different crucible uh which i don't think we're going to be happy i'm not going to be happy if the time to kill is that fast uh, across all these weapons i enjoyed the slowdown of the the encounters i enjoyed being able to be more strategic with your teammates especially in fours or like you said it's false advertising they they ramped it up uh, to demonstrate a lot of kills quickly make a trailer that's very interesting and when players buy the game and go into it um you know it'll probably be a minor thing because there's lots of different components to this game but i, I do feel like it isn't entirely fair to a a consumer who is gravitating towards this product because what they saw in that trailer because my hope really is that that's not going to translate into the the final game of what we're playing it's not going to be that fast and they are being misled by that which is you know that's not typically like bungie to to do that don't you think that uh playing the game feels faster than watching the game Hmm. What do you maybe? What I I want to like I want when you have when you have agency, uh, things feel more rapid than they might actually be because of like for instance adrenaline and stuff like that. Like you're actually doing the things, so you're the one thinking it through, rather than if you're watching someone do the exact same thing that you just did it will look slower in comparison because you're basically along for the ride. That's true. You're, you're just no, you're take- right. But that's, some- that, goes, that goes even more so that it's worrisome if you watch the video how quickly it is happening. Well, and I think but, it's more about, like, it was obvious that the damage numbers were, were driven up. As fast as, I'm just assuming that if your weapons do more damage, then your time to kill is going to be lower you know your kills will be faster if damage is higher and that's that's what i think is the area of contention here is is what we experienced in the beta and what we saw in the video which one is it going to be in the final game if it's what was in the video i'm not going to be happy if it's what was in the beta the video still is kind of like false advertising at that point just from a damage numbers perspective all right moving on oh wait where are we I don't know. Are we moving on? Let's do it. We're running out of time. So moving on, they also increased grenade damage in PvE and increased power ammo drops in PvE. Now those are changes to to, to PvE only. Um, We already were aware, they told us while the beta was going on, that in the future builds the power ammo would be increased. Um, Increased grenade damage to make those things... Wait, wait, no, wait. Okay, so I don't know if you have this in your notes... Okay, there is some uh, that there's one thing that I'm really surprised that they did with the power ammo increase, and that was being able to farm power ammo while you're playing PVE. What do you mean? They said that you'll be able to farm power ammo based uh, based off of killing yellow bars. Like yellow bars are going to be a guaranteed drop for power ammo, basically. That's that was... that's a lot of heavy. That's. That's that, kind of cool, but that's a lot of heavy. That was one of the uh, things they mentioned uh, quite a while ago when they were yeah. first talking about it. Basically, well, we, that they wanted uh, yellow bars to be guaranteed drops, so you right. have those beats that you know you're going to get ammo. Yeah, but I, what I'm what I'm saying is is with with them having that guaranteed and an up in percentage of of uh, power ammo dropping, we're going to go from seeing diddly squat pretty much in the beta to so much purple everywhere. Yeah, but it's just going to be lying on the ground eventually because you're going to be, uh, it's not going to be the, uh, the right area for what your power weapon is. So you're going to be like, well, I have power ammo and it's a rocket launcher, 
but <laughs> it's just these one dudes. So I'm just right. You've already shooting. killed the you've already killed the smaller ads, and you kill the the yellow one last. Uh, <clears throat> I'm hoping that it adds a little bit more pacing to the game. As far as uh, I feel like, because there was none previously, or ver- there was very little previously, we didn't really get to see what they were what they were hoping to show us. You know, the idea that I would just be able to pull out this additional uh, like if secondary much more damaging weapon is is appealing to me like i was saying last week <clears throat> I, I ran a strike or a nightfall where i was using my primary to take out the regular foot soldiers and then as the larger enemies came forward i was able to take out my fusion rifle and take them down i feel like that is a necessary that is something that needs to happen uh i i need to be able to switch to another more damaging weapon i, I feel like I feel like the the paper rock scissors of it is really important, um, and so I mean, really, I would I would much rather have too much purple ammo than not enough purple ammo. Although I would I would just accept <clears throat> a smaller than crazy amount of purple ammo. Like like what if <clears throat> what if you only get one drop per yellow? So if you if you have three yellow in front of you, you have three elites or ultras in front of you, and you kill all three of them, only one of them drops that purple. But if you kill them one at a time, then you'll get each of those ones will drop purple. Like instead of it just laying around everywhere, you have to move in <clears throat> and pick it up before more will drop. That could be one way that they would be pacing it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've, Agrios said last week that it doesn't really make sense you know, like sniper rifles hold a certain spot, rocket launchers hold a certain spot. Um, you know, I feel like them putting it together. I don't know. I just really need to see the whole game in order to really, in order to really see their vision. I need to see their vision. You know what I wish I, they would have I... mentioned uh, in this update was which changes they made from our feedback and which ones were the ones they already mentioned. Where this is already a super old build. And we've already addressed some of these topics because well, they they kind of did. I mean, they didn't exactly, but if you read it, they they made a point after each change. Oh, you know, people were talking about this. People were talking about this. So, I mean, they they kind of kind of did. Only kind of. I agree with you, Remy. It would be nice if they really sat down and said, "Ooh, we changed it." But come on, this is Bungie. They never do that. It gets it gets me thinking. I'm gonna have to hold on to my heavy ammo until I engage with with yellow bars, uh, where things are gonna get a little bit interesting. That you know, once you get to the the main boss at the end of a strike, you're gonna burn through your heavy pretty quickly, and you're you're not gonna get any more unless yellow bars are spawning quite frequently in those encounters. And maybe that that is what's gonna happen. There's gonna be a lot of yellow bars in those encounters to help replenish that ammo but i kind of like like you were saying before remy that you're going to use your primaries on the low level ads and you're going to just systematically step it up and only use your heavy when you know that it it really matters and if you've done that correctly you get rewarded by getting more heavy ammo right or or even if you saw like a group of foot soldiers coming out if you knew they were all entering or from this one place and you could just pepper that area with, you know, a rocket like that is also a a way of managing your economy efficiently, you know, especially because we are guaranteed this uh, secondary primary that's going to have a burn on it. Um, <clears throat> you know, that might be that might be also a way of taking down these elites. That makes a lot of sense. And plus, I don't know exactly how much of this game you'll be playing alone. I mean, patrols, you already run into other people. They've already showed us a campaign mission where other people um, entered the single player mission. So it's it's very possible that there's, you know, that you're going to run into somebody else who already has power ammo and your job as just helping keep their shield down would be enough. So I don't know. Again, just really looking f- <laughs> hey mail harry says if you hold triggers on arc warlock it deletes your account hilarious <laughs> and made me laugh um <clears throat> yeah i uh i don't know i really just i really just want to see bungie's vision for this you know like when they first announced dual primaries i really was just super excited uh and then once i was 
stuck using only dual primaries, the excitement the excitement dropped. Uh, and because I just I just don't understand. I just don't understand why they wouldn't boost the amount of purple that you would see to you know even once or twice in a strike. You know, well, it's like Unless, I said. I really feel like it's they rather than they move secondary to power ammo at this point is that they just got rid of heavy altogether and yeah. brought down rocket launchers and and grenade launchers in the secondary category. Right, and and that's not fun. That does not equal fun, uh, and that's and that's a bummer. So although I feel like that equals more fun than when I thought that they put secondaries up into power ammo. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I like my perspective better that they reduced the effectiveness of rocket launchers and grenade launchers and put them in the second category than the other way around. You know that's so funny. That's so funny that just that that perspective makes you happier about it. And you know what? Just, I just, just a wee bit. <laughs> I've been waiting for it. You know, uh, it would be smart if uh, there was an internal cooldown on the drop. Like, you would never see it, but, like, say you had a 10% chance of killing a normal enemy and getting a purple dr- a purple brick, or a guaranteed chance of getting it uh, from killing an ultra. Uh, basically, within that one minute, if you kill a thousand things, you're all still going to get one purple brick no matter what. You know, I don't I don't know why I I spend so much brain power on trying to solve these problems or these issues or these, you know, specific events for Bungie. I don't know why I spend so much time. I can't stop myself. Uh, I'm just always thinking of different and better ways uh, that that Bungie could do these things. And I thought about for a while, what if it was just like an ability? What if your heavy what if the heavy ammo economy was just on a timer? You know, like you will just get this much, this this every so well, often. Then you start to creep on the like kind of like MOBA angle, like Paragon does it. Like all your abilities just charge up, so your heavy weapon just has a different timer than your secondary weapon, and you just take totally. ammo out altogether, and it's just a recharged ability permanently. Totally. I and... think there was a weapon like that in Destiny One that broke the game for a lot of things. I don't know what it was called. <laughs> yes you do jez you're just being silly um no it, but i mean i understood that that's it's not the same thing as watching heavy ammo fall it's not the same thing as you know like they were saying having this specific beat like knowing when it's going to happen uh but you have to make it happen like like imagine that you could just hang back for you know it takes two minutes or three minutes or four minutes to charge okay we just rush in and take care of all these bad guys and then we just hang back until our heavy is recharged and then we rush in i understand that it can't work but it was something that that came well okay so to to, to mediate this sort of here jez you're absolutely right in that like it was game breaking but it was game breaking because it was unique and not the way that all secondaries worked period well, and as far as just falling say, back, like Remy says, they you could just make it based on kills, recharge it. Yeah, that would make more sense than uh, time because uh, that's the reason why it was game breaking is because uh, it was either used exclusively in raids because you can guarantee you had that ammo, uh, or in PvP you had people that were holding up until it was charged, going out, killing. And then going back and turtling until it's charged again. Kind of like scories. Everyone loves scories, right? So Nothing. dead air. <laughs> <That's what laughs> <laughs> How do you get childs on it? It would be like scories. I feel like that's the theme of tonight is Jez speaks and then nobody says anything when he's done. <laughs> Jez is, I have to say, okay, Jez has got some really, really good points. I don't agree with them, but he's got some great points. All That's right. the problem, actually. That's the problem with Jez, is that he's got great points, and then he ha- I had to think about it when he asked me, did it feel, does it feel like longer to watch or play through uh, Destiny Combat? I had to think about it for a minute, so <laughs> that's, that's what's happening there. Um... Or nobody likes Jez. I guess that's a possibility. Oh, I love Jez. Jez is awesome. <laughs> E3 2018. Yeah. 
<laughs> He's never going to go to another convention with me ever again. <laughs> he just said, eh. <laughs> <laughs> You'll just complain that you can't get in a line. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving on. I'm going to talk about episode? string that doesn't really help your case when if people actually would take longer to think about it. So if uh, the... Uh, the, we, we just finished experiencing the final Iron Banner ever. This weekend coming up is the final Trials of Osiris. Uh, how do you guys feel about this? Did you participate? Will you be participating? And should they open the lighthouse to everyone once this is over? Remy? Man, that's a crazy idea. Uh, that never even occurred to me. I don't think that they should open it up for everybody. Um I feel like it's I feel like it's something that you either earn because you're really good or it's something that you earn because you paid for it online or it's something that you earn because you're lucky to have somebody in your group who goes to the lighthouse regularly. Um, I mean, it would be cool. It would be cool if everybody just got a chance to visit it. Um, but I don't know. I imagine sharks shark head would just m- melt in like a molten pile if they opened up uh, the lighthouse to everyone, like he, uh, he was flipping out last week when I said that, um, that if should just have all of the weapons and gear available. Um, I played the, I played like two games in crucible um, to get my, to get my boxes last week, uh, iron banner. Um, I probably won't play any trials. Um, I just, I feel like over the past three years, I've just really burned myself bad uh, on Destiny. Like I don't, I don't have a real drive to play it right now. I'm actually just taking time off of video games in general, even though there's a bunch of stuff I want to play and a bunch of stuff that I like. I would love, love, love to play Fortnite. I want to play Fortnite so bad, but I, uh, I just, I just don't have the dollars to spend on it. Uh, although. Although my kids do all the time accidentally buy games on my systems, and if I knew somebody on one of these consoles or the other, uh, they might just accidentally buy that Fortnite for me then. Um, <laughs> so I don't. <clears throat> but but for the most part, like I I would have to just go back in and start deleting a bunch of stuff. And I I don't know. I I need to find that site that gives you the amount of time you've spent in Destiny with the tower attached because i don't want to see that i'd be afraid to see that well no i i feel like i need to see it in order to accept and move on with the fact that i've spent so much more time in the tower moving items around than even just playing the game so i'm just i'm just so sick of playing uh destiny item manager the game like i just i don't want to look at the my vault i don't like nothing's carrying over i've the character migration data account migration has already See, happened that should make your life easier i mean you should be able to delete all kinds of things now i should i've deleted all kinds of things at this point sh- now that I we should. have definitive answers on things I should, but I keep thinking back to, like, it's not impossible to think that I would ever play, like, Halo Reach again. And I'm really proud of the... Yeah, like, but they're not going to tune Destiny anymore. Like, if it's not good now, it's not going to be good in the future. Well, I'm, I, my <laughs> fault is not necessarily about things that are good, necessarily so much as it's about things that I love and I don't want to get rid of. And I've already thrown away so much stuff that I, I didn't want to get rid of. And I just, I just am ready to move on. I'm just ready. But don't for... you have a bunch of stuff that you're keeping? Cause it might be good at some point that you could just delete all that. Cause that's what I was able to delete all of these things that like, okay, I got the perfect example of this type of gun, but they're not going to tune it anymore. And that type of gun is never going to be a one that I'm going to enjoy using over all these other types of guns. So I was able to just delete that. Here's but... the thing. With Destiny's old situation, I had to keep that just in case all of a sudden that was the new best, funnest gun to use. Here's the thing is what is in my vault right now is either a um, a piece of gear that I love that I don't want to get rid of because it carried me through a certain part of the game, uh, you know, and is no longer really uh, valid. Or it's something like I have like I have like 10 different variants of all of those uh, regular Suros pulse rifles 
and scout rifles that have like just amazing rolls on them. Like that's all I have in my vault left is either stuff that means something to me and I don't want to get rid of, especially not to just, Oh, here's another ghost shell. You know, like I don't, I'm not interested in throwing something away so that I can fit something else in there that I don't need, or I'm just going to throw right away. So it's like, like I have a ton of excellently rolled gear that I just know that I'm not going to get out of this next nightfall. Like there's just, there's no, there's but no aren't like three or four of those versions of that Sora scout rifle better than all the rest of them that you enjoy using. And you're never going to use those other ones because you enjoy using those two or three best ones. Uh, you know, I just, uh, I'm just a weird cat, I guess. I guess I just, uh, when I, when faced with that, I think these are all excellent and I'm not going to get something better than this. Like, it's and, and you know, there's so few people playing right now. I just, I don't know. I just, uh, I just really am ready for Destiny too. I'm just really ready to see how they handle vault space moving forward. I'm very interested in in uh, finding out what the new meta is. Like, what is the new best gun? I'm excited to not have to worry about vault space. I'm excited to just continue to grab stuff and put it away and learn about it and just experience the game. I'm just ready for something new. I'm just ready for, yeah, I'm just ready for something new. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I just, I guess I'm just over destiny one. I hate to say it. It's weird. Um, <clears throat> gray, where, where do you stand on this issue? Can't figure out where my mic is. <laughs> I've got too, too many mute buttons. I'm like, mute button? Mute button? Mute button? You know you weren't muted, right? When you tapped on your mic? <laughs> yes, at that point I did. Um, I, I am in a similar place as you, Remy. Uh, I'm going into the game to enjoy the social aspect of playing with friends. Um but I'm not getting much out of the game besides just enjoying time with with people. And what's actually more interesting to me is catching up right now. Because I I totally believe Destiny 2 is going to consume such a large part of my life that I'm going to fail at many responsibilities that I currently have. So now is my time either to get things in order for when this uh, event is going to happen or what is more likely, um, finish some games that I started and really loved but haven't completed yet. So um, it's probably going to be a mix of both. Uh, I've got a few trips I've got planned too coming up. So it's, you know, getting life balanced so that when Destiny 2 launches, I am in a good place both uh, from an emotional standpoint, a health standpoint, a responsibility standpoint that I can jump in head first and not feel too bad about it. That's a really great outlook and is is basically is basically what I'm doing right now, but I didn't have the words for it. But that's it. Like like getting family in order and getting the house like I want to make sure that when Destiny drops, uh, it's there's just oh, of course I'm not doing anything other than playing Destiny too. Uh, you know, I've spent all this time doing all these other things. Uh, so that's really <clears throat> that's really awesome. Gray, uh, what about you, Sharks? Where are you with this issue? Um, okay, so yes, I played um, Iron Banner. I kind of wasn't going to as of last week, last podcast, but I thought it would be kind of stupid if I didn't play it since I love Iron Banner so much. The other thing is I hadn't been playing at all anything. I've been really hectic uh with my life lately but um i was able to play some video games i i got on um i played with my brother um i played a little bit with agrios i actually even tried to see if, <laughs> literally last minute on the monday see if i could um <laughs> sherpa somebody's card for iron banner because my brother wanted to finish his card so he could get the gear and stuff and i was like he was like well what is it you have left to do oh you know i have to get he told me first he goes i need 20 20 kills and i was like oh that's not too bad we, we've got you know got like an hour and a half we can do that and 
And then I found out really it was actually 40 kills. So <laughs> that's 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 twice as much. But my goal was I'm going to pepper every single person and I'm not going to kill people. I, it was I thought it was going to really kill my kill death ratio. It did a couple games, but um, but it really it wasn't that bad. It just didn't help. I was like, oh, my God, all you have to do is spit on that guy and you kill him. Oh, I didn't kill him. And I was like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> and so uh, so we did it. Um, Agarus jumped in the last 45 minutes, and uh, we still weren't able to get it. He literally got down to one kill. He needed one kill. And I was like, kill this guy. Kill that guy. Kill that guy. And it, it just one wasn't happening. Short. Yeah, one point short. So, but it was it was exciting going in there and and doing that last Iron Banner. Um, I've kind of thought the same process on um, trials. I I kind of gave up on trials. Of, I don't know a couple months ago because um, um, some of my buddies that were really big on trials they just didn't want to go through the hassle of going into trials anymore. It was just not worth. Um, not worth it going in with the, with the red bars and everything else. But I kind of want to go in, even if I just do a card, maybe bring my brother in. Uh, there's not going to be any hope of getting anywhere. Um, but um, just to even just to show him and just to say I, I went in and did uh, one one last trials card. So I might do trials this weekend. Um, and so, yeah, you know, I, I think it's really dumb. I mean, we've talked about this in the past. I, I I am very disappointed that Bungie has decided to pull the plug on things like this. Um, I realize that it's resources, I guess, but I kind of don't really understand it. Um, I think it's a bummer for people that have just bought the game, and there are people just buying the game. My brother just bought the game, you know. Uh, he bought it because he wanted to, to see what it was like before Destiny 2. And he, I said, well, you're never going to go back and play. Well, you never know. You never know what might happen. You like never know. Like what you're saying about, about Halo, right? But um, so I, 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 I'm really bummed on that part of it. Um, but since they have taken this stuff away, and you're going to flip out. But I think it would be cool if they opened up the lighthouse for everybody just to go. Why not? It's <laughs> not going to make a difference either way for anything, for Grimoire, for nothing, because none of that stuff goes forward any further. Well, I mean, I guess Grimoire does, but I mean, it, it really doesn't make a difference. Ooh, give people five Grimoire points and they get to go and explore it. I think that's really awesome. I, I'm also actually another thing that I saw on, um, I think this was through Reddit um, today when I was looking through, um, really kind of surprised that they never showed us what was behind that barrier in the lighthouse. You know, yeah, but, yeah. but yeah, well, no, you know, I I'm wish they go with the whole, I mean, I don't want to sound generic, but like cut content, you know, like, Oh yeah, no, know no, no, that I know. They I know. I, so I didn't much wanna, stuff. I didn't, I didn't really want to make it a discussion. I just, you know, it's like, you know, kind of bummer, but yeah, no, I wish, I wish they would open it up for all those people that didn't, didn't get a chance to go there after this weekend you're not going to get rewarded for it but at least you get to see it and it's like who cares you know it is it is cool well, to see what it. i was saying was that you know that was allegedly a cyrus's pad and we know that one of the dlcs is going to center around a cyrus so finding out what's behind things may come yet in the future that's what i was getting at as far as cut content but will sharks be mad when they reuse the same lighthouse area <laughs> no, because no, because yes. uh, I I think it was really <laughs> under underused. Um, I I think it was really underused for for how big of it uh, an area it was. So, yeah, I wouldn't mind if they used that. I think you're. I think that helmet's uh, affecting your judgment. <laughs> I haven't haven't had enough beer. <laughs> right, you need a little straw. You need a little straw. <laughs> um. All right. Everyone talked on this. Move it on. I didn't, right, but so. it's pretty easy for me to say that I didn't do it, won't do it. Um, kind of laughed because it kind of reminds me of all the conversation we had on wolf masks. Um, yeah. Uh, what what uh what would it take? Like like what is your price to 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 try? Like what would it take? 
Is there anything that has out there? Maybe if it mattered. Okay, and it doesn't matter anymore because the data has already been transferred. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. Got it. Moving on. All right, so promotions, promotions, promotions. We know about Rockstar promotion. Okay, those those cans are showing up now across the country. Uh, we they're showing up more most recently up and down the coast of California from Los Angeles to San Jose and 7-Elevens and Safeways and Smiths and uh, also in Fort Campbell, Kentucky, inexplicably, <laughs> at the Airfield Mini Mall. But um, anyway, so those are pe- popping up across the country. Keep your eyes open. Uh, those can be redeemed starting September 1st. We also know about Pop-Tarts promotion. Um, I bought some. That that appears to be on any Pop-Tarts, not just the Destiny Pop-Tarts, and only ones which you have a receipt for purchasing after September 1st. Okay. I saw that uh, I saw that Holtzman had had picked up some um, Jolly Rancher Pop-Tarts, and I was like, yes, yes. And I saw them in the store, and I bought some. Isn't it also only the 24-pack or the 12-pack or something like this? There's two or is different it any packs. Box? Um I'd have to pull it up here. I don't have it handy, but I I, I, I think it's the 8-pack and the 24-pack. The 8-pack and the 24-pack? I, I think so. But I, I'd have to I have to pull it up here. I don't have that right in front of me. But um, the 7-Eleven, I mean, the, the Pop-Tarts promotion gets you an XP boost, whereas the uh, Rockstar promotion gets you in-game items, allegedly in-game gear engrams is what's been uh, talked about. And um, it appears that you can get three per week from regular codes and one additional one from a, a zero calorie code. So that would be four per week that you can get. Uh, uh, I'm torn. How much are these things? How much do these rock Rockstars stars run? Yeah. Uh, if, if, you, if you find them for sale you can get them for, if you find good deals you can get them for two dollars each man it's really going to depend for me on uh on what comes in these things like if you, we're talking you, like sparrows or if we're talking like you know like a special shader um i'm very i'm very likely to purchase multiple of these rock stars and really just not drink them you, like okay, you uh, know what it's gonna be you know how you get sublime legendary engrams right now yes that's what I feel like it's going to be. It's just going to be regular legendary engrams, but you're only going to get a certain selection of things from them. Like you get some sublime engrams for PlayStation right now. But it's going to be instead of sublime engrams, they're going to be Rockstar engrams. I'm still hoping for a generic set of armor that has a gold star on it, like the old uh, Queen's Wrath stuff. Now, the real question is, is it going to pop out, like, at the three light level stuff and need infused, like, the boxes? Yeah. Or is it yeah. going to come out with an infusion level? No. It'll probably just be three light. There's no point right. in... It wouldn't... I don't think it's going to hurt, but at the same time, uh, there's no point for it to drop at that level anyways. And I don't think it would harm the game unless it was dropping at raid level. Well, the right. fact that you're restrict I like the fact that you're restricted to a certain number for a week. People can't literally go out and be a millionaire and buy themselves 40,000 40, engrams a week extra for all kinds of different roles on things. I, I enjoy that aspect of this promotion. Not I'm only really that, confused. but they, they're not promoting kids drink 20 rock stars a week because they can only redeem four. I'm really confused why they have that one extra code on zero calorie. Man, because it's who buys that crap? Rockstar wants you to buy zero calorie. They're new zero calorie flavors. Right? They got they got giant tankers just waiting offshore with like a million, millions and millions of zero calories they need to sell. Uh, and I mean, this is really brilliant because you're looking at between eight and twelve dollars, eight and sixteen dollars a week uh, in sales of these. If it turns out that there that there's good stuff in there, um, I will make it happen. Um, the, yeah, the XP boost I think would be cool on on a certain level. I mean, Pop Tarts. Uh, I would already I would already purchase Pop Tarts. Rockstar. I mean, the the items are going to have to be cool. 
Um, well, here's Hadouken the thing. There's child. so many people out there who are already drinking energy drinks on a regular basis who don't even play video games, let alone Destiny, that hopefully a lot of Guardians will be able to find people amongst their friends to to go ahead and purchase these cans for them. Oh, what if you sat at the store and you waited for people to walk up to the Rockstar and be like, I will go in 50-50 for you for this. Oh, but then you have to have the pop tops and they'd have to, well, I was have considered- to drink them right there. <laughs> well, yeah. Right, yeah, they would need to. I mean, you you can actually, if they're like the Red Bull ones, you could actually bend them up without opening the can to read what's on the back of the tab. If you like, hold it and fold it in half. Or after they open it, you can just snap a picture and then leave. Yeah, that's true. Uh, because I would way, I would way be interested in okay. going and have these. But what you could do is you could go to local colleges and think places like that where people were drinking and places you think people were drinking Red Bulls and put up a little flyer with your, your contact information on it oh. and offer them 50 cents per tab or something like that. Oh, man. I was thinking even better. Um, college students always need money. So if they say, I want to drink Rockstars anyway and I have 10 tabs per week, <laughs> that's five bucks I get from calling this dude. Just wait. And they in just the... send you pictures of the things and you redeem them and send the money to your PayPal account. That's you could just wait. You could just wait in the library until someone is studying drinks a rock star does in the garbage after they leave. Right? That's another thing yeah, I was thinking. If you want to like be like a scavenger digging through garbage and stuff. You only got to do it four times a week. Right? Dude, it cracks me up. We were so I remember walking around after E3 with sharks looking for the garbage can that Deej threw his pass away in. So oh my god, I found it too. I knew which one it was. But it was too much crap in there. I didn't want to put my hand in there. Yeah. Would have been it. like a Saw movie. Standards. <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. That's, that's called standards. That's sort of <laughs> yeah, no, I was sitting there looking at it and I was like, that's the one. That is the one. And he goes, I, he might, he's probably go, right. He showed me the picture. It. I was like, I'm 100% <laughs> positive. It's this one. It can't be any other one. And he's like, well, stick your hand in there. I go, no, there's so much garbage. I just wanted to see sharks dig through the garbage on the crowded city street. It was going to be funny. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. But, yeah. And and Uh, that's the other thing. Like, if I had done it, I would have posted it. And if I had posted it, Deej would never talk to me. Like, he's not going to talk to me. But they never talk to me. Like, yeah. Look what I put in the garbage. Or, or that's how you get your, your community focus, you know, this guy. And then, like, someone's going to draw a picture of you, like, dumpster diving. Shark the garbage <laughs> yeah. man. So, so, you, so what, what the community focus would say is, is Deej would say, okay, so first you tried to literally run into me at E3, and then you dug through the garbage for my tag. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What uh, this email is, it's actually a subpoena for the restraining order. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stealth Vixen says, I'm thinking it may be a Rockstar Energy Armor set, maybe. Uh, okay. And that that would be interesting, like having some kind of branding or even some kind of like a less obvious branding, you know, some kind of just a star or something like this. But I feel like that's I feel like that's a line that Bungie will not cross. Like, okay, like, uh, let's talk about lines across. I didn't even get to the worst one yet. There's the Virgin Mobile or the Virgin Inner, uh, whatever, Virgin, Virgin something, Virgin, Virgin Fiber. Media. Yeah, Virgin Fiber. Where you get a sweet ass sparrow for being a UK resident who switches your home internet service provider to Virgin Mobile or Virgin. Right. I keep saying mobile. It's not mobile. But yeah, it's, this Virgin is the most mobile ridiculous fiber. promotion. Ever, totally. Uh, you know what? And okay. I feel like as long as it does not say "Virgin" across the side of that sparrow, it's no, still not pushing the pu- pushing past the boundary. Okay, so you no, realize how you have to acquire it. It's a badass looking sparrow. It's the no, only it sparrow a, they've talked about. It's but a super you're badass. Someone sparrow. someone switch their home internet provider to get totally. it. Totally. Well, I, I mean, this this goes it back to the UK. Okay. Do you remember uh, back when there was a, a Sparrow, I think it was the GameStop exclusive one, that was leaked by Virgin? Okay, so you guys you guys realize, okay, right now, okay, so here's here, this is really funny, right? Okay, so more console. Wait. It, everybody uh, knows who more console is. How do you, was really upset. The Virgin Sparrow is a timed release. 
Well, yeah, most of the yeah. stuff is, but it's okay. still annoying and okay. ridiculous. Okay, no, wait, 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 wait. I don't have a problem wait. with acquiring things normal ways, but that's just ridiculous. Okay, listen, listen. Okay, so 